in section 4.4, number 16, this whole type of problem where you have two groups of factors, you either have negative powers or rational powers or both is usually what the case is going to be. Uh, the process for solving all of these is going to be identical. Uh, if, you, if you can visualize that you have this two groups of factors separated by a minus, what you can then look to do is r remove any common factors between the two groups. So what I would do is I'd smart start in the smaller group. So here this, the group in the right is a little bit smaller. There's only a couple different base factors to look at. Let's look at numbers first. So we have 5 and we have negative 3 times 2. Well, are there any common factors between 5 and negative 6? No. So let's move to the x's. The base x, we have a base x to the 4th, and here we have x to the 5th times x. So x to the 6th. Are there any common factors we can remove between those? There's a common base of x. Take out the smallest power. So which one is smaller, 6 or 4? The smaller one is further to the left on a number line. Okay, we move to the next base here, the x squared plus 1s. This is also a base common to both groups. So we remove the smallest power. So which is smaller, negative 4 or negative 3? Negative 4 is, again, further to the left on the number line. Okay, anytime I approach these problems, I always look at whatever remains inside this grouping symbol when I remove my common factors has to have the same form as the original, which is one group minus another. And so let's just see what plugs into these remaining groups here. So we took out four of the x's, so I'm going to subtract a four. Again, when we take it out or divide it out, it, um, we wind up subtracting power. So we take out four x's and we take out a negative four from the power of x squared plus one. Subtracting a negative is equivalent to adding the opposite. So negative four plus four becomes a zero, so anything to the zero power has a value of one. So in effect, that whole factor is removed. And so we can see what's left here. We have a negative three times two, which is a negative six. We have an x to the five minus four, which is just x times x, which gives us a net x squared. Okay, now we look at the second group. We removed four, a power of four from the x's. We moved a power of negative four from the x squared plus ones. Subtracting a negative is equivalent to adding the opposite. So now when we look to see what's left in this second group, we have our 5. Our x to the 4 minus 4 is 0, so that whole factor canceled out. And then negative 3 plus a 4 gives you a positive 1. So we get x squared plus 1 to the first. And this whole thing is all over x to the fifth squared. When you take a power to a power, you multiply. <clears throat> Once you get to this form, so you factored everything out, now you have to simplify. So Anything with a negative power, we're going to move. So this x squared plus 1 gets moved to the denominator, change the sign to positive. Okay, we have this common base of x. So these four x's cancel with four of these, leaving how many? Six. And then we can distribute our, uh, across our numerator. <coughs> we have a negative 6x squared minus a 5x squared minus a 1, or a 1 times 5, so minus a 5. And so when you simplify this completely, you wind up with <coughs> your numerator of negative 11x squared minus 5 all over x to the 6th, x squared plus 1 to the 4th. There were no <coughs> factors that got canceled from our denominator, so you don't need to worry about any of the domain restrictions.